Welcome back to another adventure with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. This is Stu Jones, and this is our final in a four-part series featuring the 25th annual Emerald Coast Poker Run. When we left off in our last episode, we had just waited out a big rainstorm at uh, Juana's Pagodas in Navarre, but the rain had cleared and our teams were back on the water, heading back towards the Bay Area, including Fort Walton and Destin, and they're going to put the boats up for the night and get ready for the big Saturday night bash. So let's catch up with a few teams as they head eastbound on the Intracoastal Waterway near Santa Rosa Sound. Catching up now with Mark and Susan Pascal, who came all the way from Georgia to join us uh, in this 42-foot Fountain Lightning team. A current situation, I guess that's a good name for a boat because it seems like it's always changing. You guys change your boats like you change your underwear sometimes. But I'll tell you what, this Fountain 42 is a sweet looking ride. I love the graphics and it is a design that has certainly stood the test of time. We've got more fountains on this poker run than any other brand. In fact, I counted 16 fountains registered for the Emerald Coast Poker Run, and that may be a record for this event. It seems like the Emerald Coast draws fountains from all over the South, and they're great boats for poker runs, and if you take care of them, they're gonna be there for a long, long time to give you a lot of poker run fun. Uh, thanks to Mark and his crew. Notice all the guys are wearing their life jackets following our safety management guidelines. I appreciate that, guys, and it's worth a shout out to you. Uh, thanks for following the program and keeping it safe. Now we're back on our official pace boat, the Midnight Express, as we get back on the course and start heading eastbound and just getting the boats back up on plane. We've got about a 25-mile ride back to Fort Walton Beach uh, to settle in for the night. Looks like all this excitement has got Kayla a little drowsy. She's having a little nap, closing her eyes, and saving her energy for the big party tonight and, of course, the raft-up party on Sunday. Catching up alongside now with Bill Waters, uh, another Florida resident here doing the poker run in his 35-foot Mar-Lago. Uh, it's got uh, twin Mercury Verados. Actually, a good setup for a center console. This is kind of a traditional center console. Uh, we would have seen this boat maybe as long as 10 years ago. Uh, a very popular model that's been around for a while, but I think it's an ideal boat for running these poker runs and certainly up here in the Florida Panhandle. Got a big crew on board having a good time. Hey, everybody. Having fun today? I bet you are. One thing about a center console is you don't have to leave anybody back home on the dock. You get to bring all your friends and have a great time on the poker run. One little uh, subtle thing about the wardrobe. You notice how everybody <laughs> notice how everybody is kind of color coordinated. They're either wearing a black or a white t-shirt and they've got their lime green, fluorescent green hats and shorts. So at least they made some attempt to have some kind of uh, crew coordination on the outfit. So. Uh, this is something that we actually give a prize to the crews for, so keep that in mind, guys, as we go forward. Right now, all I can think of is one thing, bikinis. And here comes our helicopter now catching up with our official pace boat. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but this helicopter was kind of a cool deal. We, uh, we got it from Timberview helicopters in Destin and it just so happens he buys and sells a lot of choppers and this one was a police chopper that they just picked up and it still said police on the side so that was kind of neat. Uh, back with Eric Glazer and this uh, 39 Midnight Express uh, triple Mercury Verados. Notice it's got the side entry door. I did spend a little time on this boat. It's a great ride and obviously I'm on that center console bandwagon like a lot of you guys are. You really can't beat them for fun and comfort. Uh, and the ability to bring a lot of people on a poker run. I don't think that they even got close to their crew capacity here on this run. They had about eight people on board. Could have easily taken another eight and been comfortable. So uh, that's really what makes these center consoles such great poker run machines. You know, you don't even have to fish to, to want to own a center console these days. In fact, if you look closely, very few of these center consoles are rigged for fishing. These are just people that want to go for a ride. Tracy uh, Gutierrez, office manager from FPC, rode along today. She doesn't get a chance to ride along on the poker runs very often, but she made it out all the way up to Emerald Coast to help us out. So we said, you know what, on Saturday, Tracy, you're going to get to go for your boat ride. There's a better shot of that police helicopter, uh, Robinson R44. Uh, it even had all the rigging for one of those cameras that you can operate automatically from the cockpit. Jim Stockton from Texas, uh, not his first rodeo here in Emerald Coast. He's been here before. Had to stop for a little bit. He had a little engine problem. Turns out it wasn't serious, but at least he took the effort, made the effort to open up the hatches and take a close look. I think that's a smart move on his part. Getting closer to Fort Walton Beach now. Looks like Kayla's back uh, re-energized. She had her little siesta. Now she's back in the game, ready to play. 
Thanks to RJ Murdoch for coming along and getting some good video. He's our local videographer who's been helping us out with this event for several years. And uh, it's always good to get this perspective from inside the boat as well as from the helicopter. And it really just adds another dimension to, uh, to the poker run. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to attend the Emerald Coast poker run, this gives you an added dimension so you can see what it's like when you do finally get a chance to join us. Not sure what's going on with this little cat, but uh, I do think there's an in a hatch open there. Not an engine hatch, but a hatch nonetheless. I hope they notice that before it whacks somebody in the head. Uh, but a lot of boats uh, cruising along as we head back eastbound, now arriving back in Fort Walton Beach here, and there's Adventure Marina, where I believe the poker card checkpoint has now been closed. Uh, remember, the checkpoints are open from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. daily, so if you don't get your cards by 4, uh, you're going to have to play with what you got. Lance and Paula Pandapinto from Louisiana with their 30-foot Baja back again for another year. Big shout out to Brooks Bridge Marina and their staff uh, for rolling out the red carpet and giving the Florida Powerboat Club plenty of dockage for the run. Crab Island uh, is going to be a hot spot now for the rest of the day as everyone wraps up, and this is a number one sort of anchorage in the area. There's uh, Team Wacob uh, from Oklahoma with their four boats and their fleet, including the newest addition, that big Broward motor yacht. Just a few feet away, Scott Favre had a rendezvous with his father at Scott's Cigarette, uh, tied up alongside his dad's 92 Viking, uh, one of very few that are uh, just new to the waterways. What an impressive sport fishing vessel that is. And I can't help circling to get one more shot. Uh, two MTIs, a 34, a 52, 42 Cigarette Huntress, and this big 110-foot, I believe, Broward Yacht. Uh, but this fleet uh, travels around to a lot of Florida Powerboat Club events. You're going to see them all the way from the Florida Panhandle down to Key West on many events with the club. Almost back to her home port, at least for the weekend. This is, again, the Midnight Express Pace Boat, which is going to be situated at uh, AJ's Dock, I believe. So one last cross uh, here on Choctahatchee Bay and around Crab Island. The girls are getting a little blanky, a little towel action on their legs to warm up. Uh, but uh, you start to notice that the traffic is dying down a little bit because a lot of people have returned already to their home ports. And I think that the power boaters uh, in general, and there's Nate and Rob and Michelle, by the way, in that 40-foot uh, MTI, the Miami Vice boat called Mojo. He's getting it all redone, so you're not going to see it like that anymore. I think he should have left it the way it was. I really liked it. But anyway, uh, yeah, the boats are all returning to their home ports. And, you know, it's getting late in the day. It's already pushing probably 5 o'clock uh, as we get ready to settle in for the night and go to the party. Jim and Lynn Archambault having fun, as they always do, on their 34 CCX. Looks like Jim's got a captain today, so he can play. <laughs> but uh, a fun crew to hang out with. And there you go. Here's a big party. This is something you're going to get used to seeing on every Emerald Coast Poker Run. Probably one of the best places to stick the nose of the boat up in the soft sand. And they are currently rebuilding Noriega Point, so it will come out right past the Emerald Grand in the background, which will provide more protected waters in front of Harbor Walk Village and therefore creating more dock space for our Poker Run attendees. So that is one of the many changes that we have to look forward to for our 2018 event happening in mid-August uh, this summer. More beauty shots here as we cross by Harbor Walk Village. Uh, that is Margaritaville in the background and the Land Shark Lookout. There's that Lucky Dog charter boat, and here's the Parasail boat. Obviously a very, very busy commercial harbor here in Destin Harbor. In fact, Bruce Crawl from the Emerald Grand told me that this harbor is the most active and the largest charter fishing fleet in the entire United States. And in the one mile or a mile and a half of uh, Destin Harbor, there are, are more charter boats running day in and day out. And another fact that Bruce shared with me was that this mile and a half or two mile stretch of hotels and retail restaurants and charter fishing boats is one of the top producing harbors in all of the United States. And their season is really just over three months long. So that's a pretty amazing accomplishment if you start comparing it to other markets in the US. So this will be the part of the day when everyone gets back to their home port, and that's a different thing for different people. Some, if they're local, just means going back to their home dock and just parking their boat at the dock and having a shower and jumping in the car and uh, heading to the party. And I know that's what a lot of these people do. And that's probably one of the reasons why they all get to the party at 6 o'clock or 6.30, uh, when in fact the rest of us, the Florida Powerboat Club guys, most of us have still a lot of heavy lifting to do. Here's an example. This is uh, one of our club members, Octavio Valdivia, and he's got a, a big outer limits. 
So he's got his buddy to bring the truck and trailer down, and uh, they put the outer limits on the trailer here at the Marler Park boat ramp. I will say this, that the Marler ramp has really been our savior uh, for a lot of us with these big rides because it's big enough to manage launching a big power boat like this. And just down, literally 100 yards away down the driveway is the new lot that we now rent from the Emerald Coast Conference Center. Uh, but this is really impressive watching a big, huge fiberglass monster like this come out of the water. And these facilities uh, provide us uh, the ideal platform to do that. And that's why we're happy that we've got the convention center lot uh, just uh, 100 yards up the driveway. And what I also did was I arranged with the convention center staff to have access to the fresh water. And we purchased four 100-foot hoses with uh, the proper uh, hardware so that we could rinse and flush all the boats. Not just rinse the salt off the boats on the exterior, but also rinse the drives, flush the engines, and wash off the drives and propellers, because some of these props are six, $7,000 a piece. So this is something that we've really done our best to enhance this part of the program, and I think that from the feedback I get, uh, this is what these guys, what everybody wants to see if you're a powerboat owner. And this is what you have to do if you want to maintain these machines and keep them in good shape. So this is what separates the powerboat guys from the standard cruisers and runabouts and everybody else, uh, you know, typically that would be in the Ruby class. We can't get all this done at, in a snap of the fingers. This takes an hour and a half to two hours for some guys. Then you've got to get back to your hotel. So, I mean, it's a great facility. We're happy that it worked out well. Uh, we got a few party crashers that got into the mix that shouldn't have been here, unfortunately, uh, but that's the way it works. But uh, from now on, we're going to continue to have this offered exclusively to Florida Powerboat Club members and for those who paid the $125 fee uh, to have this facility available for them. So here's one final shot uh, from the drone just to give you an idea of what it looks like and uh, plan ahead. We're going to have this again for 2018. And it gives drivers a peace of mind knowing that the boat was properly washed and flushed and ready to roll home on the following day. And we're now congregating at the world famous Emerald Coast Convention Center. And I say world famous because well, heck, we've been going here for about 15 years, and everybody that attends this poker run passes through these doors and uh, has a chance to have a, a really great party that has evolved over the years, a very festive spirit here at this party, everybody having a good time, and uh, lots of stuff going on in the convention hall, especially you know, showcasing that Ford F-150 from Hub City Ford. Somebody's going to take that truck home, and in the bed of the truck, is that Harley Davidson 750 Street from Gus and his gang at Emerald Coast Harley Davidson. Uh, this is something that was new uh, to the equation in recent years, and uh, I think it's a nice prize package. Some new entertainment uh, on the agenda for this uh, Saturday evening. Uh, I'm not involved in the planning of the party. That's uh, not one of my areas of responsibility. Uh, it's part of the Emerald Coast Foundation to set up this uh, uh, auction table and to set up the party and we just pay for it. We pay them for all of our Florida Powerboat Club members to attend, uh, which is 500 in total that we paid for this year. Now, um, but if you look around, you'll see lots of great items uh, that Donna has at her table and I know that that's a big part of the fundraising activities and thanks to all of the uh, generous donors who brought some of those items here to the event uh, to be auctioned off. Looking around though, you can see it's a very, very crowded event. It's gotten bigger over time and unfortunately not all the square footage in the convention hall can be used because we've got all the dealers down at one end. Of course, you've got the stage and the dance floor in the middle and the prize area and then you have all the food offering at the other end. So it kind of, uh, you know, takes up a lot of the footprint of the convention center so it makes it more difficult for them to put a lot of tables down and that was a big issue this year one of the reasons that literally hundreds of our participants from the emerald class from fpc complained that they couldn't get a table they couldn't even get a seat never mind a table and a lot of them when they got here shortly after 8 p.m or 8 30 p.m which is normal for most of us there wasn't even any food left so that's a big problem uh, i think it's great for the locals to be able to come out here and get here and make the six o'clock or the 6.30 opening. It's easier for them, they live locally. And wow, that's a great show, look at that. I hope she doesn't fall down. I think, I think that would hurt. Uh, but uh, I don't know who hired these girls, but it was kind of cool, I thought. Some people didn't think it was great, but I thought it was kind of cool. A little side show. Not having live entertainment in form of a band, you have to do something to have some entertainment. And I didn't think it was such a bad idea. But you can look around the room and you'll see I mean, I don't know about you guys, but 
I don't know half the people here on this poker run, and that's uh, because a lot of them are locals in the Ruby class, and they, you know, they're probably not involved in our program, and so it makes it kind of difficult for some of you in the powerboat side of things, uh, the FPC side. I know that you guys are very passionate about your lifestyle, and I know you like to hang out with people that are like-minded and in the same circles as you, and it, it doesn't make you arrogant. You're just passionate. You just want to hang out with your peers. And I know that that's sometimes hard to do when you're in a mixed setting where you really don't know a lot of the people. And I think that's kind of the feedback that I got from a lot of our Florida Powerboat Club attendees this year, that who are these people sitting beside us and all, all around us? And, you know, we don't know who they were. We've never seen them before. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you need to be prepared for that when you're in this kind of a setting. Playing out the poker cards, it does take quite a while. Uh, it's a different process than we would normally do at a lot of our regular poker runs, but uh, it still works, and I think that it's uh, it's been a good format for many years. You go up and you play your hand out, pay extra money for extra cards, try to get the very best possible hand that you can get, and then about nine players will go to the final table. I think one of those seats is through a draw, and the other eight are through high hands. And then you end up with the final table, and that's really... Uh, when all the fun really begins. But uh, going through the process is a lot of fun. It does take a while. It does push the night late, quite late. I know, again, some people say, why, do, why does this party go to 11.30 every time? Can't they wrap it up by 10.30 or 11 and we can get out the door? Well, it's impossible because there's hundreds and hundreds of people playing out their poker hands. And now you've got the Emerald class on one side and you've got the Ruby class on the other side. And between the two, you've got literally hundreds and hundreds of hands to be played out, and it does take a little while. Another thing that we had to forego was the opportunity to do our People's Choice Awards uh, for the Emerald Coast Poker Run. Uh, it just doesn't fit into the program. At least we're not given the opportunity by the foundation uh, staff, the board who create the party. There's just no room for it. So that's something that's a big part of what we do with our events, and we're not allowed to do it here. So I think that's a bit of an issue. Here we are now at the final table. I'm not sure if this is a Ruby class table or the Emerald class table, but th it ended up being the Ruby class won the motorcycle, and the Emerald class would win the F-150 uh, pickup truck. So um, some of the players here, I'm not really sure who's all at the table. It's difficult to follow it, but I do catch up at the end, and I was happy to see Brad Hancock from Georgia in Team Rockin' Taco as our grand prize winner. He's going to take home that Hub City Ford F-150 pickup truck, and there's actually Chris Daggs right there with the lucky hand. Uh, a pair of kings with a queen high. Uh, Chris Daggs giving him a congratulation. Uh, Chris has been a great supporter of this event. Uh, and there's the AO Coolers uh, monogram bag with the Emerald Coast Poker Run souvenir stitching on it. Uh, I got a chance to say hi to Brad and his gang. Uh, really happy to have them here on the event. They've been great supporters of the Poker Run for many years. And uh, glad to see them take home that grand prize. Sunday morning and one more day of play with the Emerald Coast gang as we get up in the Timberview Helicopters R44. Uh, once again, I'm going to be shooting photography from the front seat. We've got David uh, in the back seat shooting video. And the plan today is really just to catch up with all the teams that we may have missed. So we're getting started here out in the Gulf waters. You can see the beautiful color of the water. This is Bobby Tampa from Florida in his 29-foot fountain called Team On Fire. And Bobby's been here before. He joined us last year, but in a different boat. And then I would I'd like to see this 29. It's the smallest of the 16 fountains registered. It is the smallest, but you can see he likes going fast. He's got the boat dialed in nicely. And look at how beautifully calm these waters are. Just a slight roll offshore here. And we don't normally go out into the Gulf, but when the conditions are this ideal, I think it's a great time to do it. And uh, Bobby was happy to get out here and push the throttles forward and put on a good show for us as our first boat for the Sunday aerial segment.
Still out on the Gulf waters here as we catch up with Michael and Jennifer Sobzik from Texas. They actually do their boating on Lake Travis. And kind of ironic that the last boat we saw was a 29 Fountain. And Michael told me in his bio that his last boat was a 29 Fountain. They've attended this run a number of times in identical Formula 353s in 2013 and 2016. They finally decided to trailer their own formula out here to join us for the Emerald Coast Poker Run. So it's the first time they're registered as their own team. Joining them in the boat today, their friends Steve and Randy, and I'm sure that they're all having a fantastic time. One of the things that they love about power boating is getting air, going fast, and being able to participate on poker runs with like-minded individuals. Well, I couldn't say that any better, Michael. That's what it's all about, hanging out with your peers, meeting new friends, and enjoying the Florida boating lifestyle, even if you're from Texas. Another fountain, uh, one of the 16 registered on this run, uh, 35 fountain, slippery when wet. Scott and Monica James from South Carolina, poker run veterans here at the Emerald Coast. They've been coming for more than 10 years, and they brought their kids for many of those 10 years. But now uh, the kids are growing up in college, and it's time to bring on some friends. So they brought another couple with them, and they've been having a great time. Got into a little uh, accident earlier on Saturday. Nobody got hurt. A little bit of damage to the back of the boat, but uh, Scott was really, really cool about it. I mean, he's, he was so cool about it, let me tell you. You know, he wasn't mad. He, he just was happy to go home, and nobody got hurt. Uh, safety management crew was engaged because somebody got pitched out of the boat, so it could have been more serious. Uh, but it wasn't, and uh, look at them today, just having a great ride in this 35 fountain. Come a long way every year to be a part of this event. I love it when they come because they're such fun people to hang out with. And, uh, you know, Scott is always really engaged with the club. He wants to know what's going on. And I love it when members uh, take an interest in what's going on with the Florida Powerboat Club. And he was very outspoken in terms of his, his comments and his input. All very constructive, I must add. And it had a lot to do with safety. But the outcome really is that we're going to our two-event format for 2018. And I think the whole town will be very happy with the outcome, and as will all of the boaters. Let's say hi now to Nate Michelle and his new 40-foot MTI, at least new to him. The team Mojo is about that uh, made its Hollywood debut in the movie Miami Vice back uh, several years ago. And this is one of the first times we've seen the boat. It made its way into the Key West Poker Run Village back in about 08, I believe it was, when the movie came out. But uh, since then, we haven't seen the boat. I'm not sure where it went. But you look closely and you can see the film clips on the side. Obviously, Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx were the stars of that show. And you can see just a few of the film clips and the words Mojo. Now, the ironic part about this uh, appearance of this boat in that movie is that a lot of the Florida boating community, South Florida boating community, was involved in the filming of that movie. I know Johnny Tomlinson from TNT Marine Center was there. Larry Goldman, uh, the late Larry Goldman, was involved. And they were really kind of miffed that the producers took a lot of the boating segments out of the movie. And in particular, this boat, they had filmed a lot with it. And I don't think the boat really made that much of the movie, if I recall. And a lot of the boating community was like up in arms about that because they thought it was going to be really, really focused on all the boating aspects. So I think that today, Nate, and I think that's his buddy Pete Teferro beside him, are going to get more airtime at about a minute and a half. They're going to get more airtime today on the Emerald Coast video than this boat actually got in the movie uh, when it released Miami Vice. So your lucky day. But I do remind everybody else, take a good close look at this boat. And it, it's really cool. It's done very well. Love the paintwork. Nate says, no, he's going to make it Nate's boat. So he took this boat home after the poker run and admitted that nah, the paint's coming off. He's going to completely redo the boat. I know he's capable of doing that because he did it to his outer limits. So enjoy this video footage because it's the last time you're going to see Team Mojo in these colors. It's going to be a completely new boat next year. Everybody loves a great rooster tail. In fact, I can't get enough of them. I love catching up with a boat that's throwing a big tail like this is happening with this 42 fountain. Uh, this is Amos and Deb Lisenby. They are Emerald Coast Poker Run veterans. They've been doing this event for at least a decade with this boat. Uh, they also redid the fountain recently with new colors. Obviously, it's a staggered setup with uh, number six drives. That's why they're throwing out such a huge rooster tail. Uh, and it's really just a setup that works. Uh, they started out with 700s in this boat. I think they may have gone a little bigger. They might have juiced them up and uh, did the 850, the Whipples. I'm not certain, but I know the boat runs great, 
and Amos is a hardcore powerboating and motoring enthusiast. He's a Corvette fan, too. He told me about the Corvette he bought. He actually took delivery up at the factory in Kentucky, which is kind of a cool program. And uh, he just loves going fast, and he loves uh, he loves his motorsports. Also a very generous man. I'd like to thank Nate and Deb for making a kind contribution to the Florida Powerboat Club after the event. Um, they've been such great supporters, and they know we work hard to put on a great show, and, uh, and they like to show their support for it. So uh, from Panama City Beach, Florida, they're in their nursery business. Uh, it's a family business. They've, their daughter works for them as well, and I met her uh, at one point recently. But uh, thanks to the Lies and Bees for their continued support. You're looking great today in your 42 Fountain. We're just having a great day today catching up with some of these boats, uh, many of whom got missed in the previous days, but Donald Brady from Florida and his 35-foot Everglades called Team Swamp Chomp 2, and of course Swamp Chomp 1 was on a lot of these events before, but this 35 Everglades, uh, I believe he got it from Legendary Marine, is just a fantastic boat, and he's got himself a pretty, pretty nice crew on board. Uh, three lovely ladies and... Um, one very lucky guy. <laughs> and of course, Don, he's in there behind the tinted glass. We can't even see him. Uh, he's running the boat right now. But uh, this is uh, this is what you call a nice Sunday afternoon. I don't, can't think of a better way to spend your Sunday afternoon than cruising around in the bay waters in your bikini. Girls, uh, thank you for looking so wonderful. I hope you come back next year. <laughs> we, could, we could use a lot more of you. And uh, yeah, this is um, the kind of thing that you see a lot of around here, these center consoles are getting very popular in the Florida Panhandle. So whether you're on a poker run, or whether you're out fishing, or whether you're just out for a Sunday cruise, living up here in the Emerald Coast, whether you're in Destin or Fort Walton or one of the surrounding communities, this is the best way to truly enjoy the Florida boating lifestyle because you can just boat for miles and miles and miles and it really never gets old. A shout out to some newcomers, uh, their first time here on the Emerald Coast Poker Run. Brian and Susan Hodge came all the way from Ohio with their 29 foot sensation, Blown to Be Wild. So, you know, you got to ask yourself, Blown to Be Wild, there must be a pretty big engine back there. Well, indeed, there is. The only thing missing is the giant hood scoop, which it could probably use because that motor, it's a single engine, but it's a monster motor. And this boat really runs. It's, uh, it runs well over 80 miles per hour. And I did get some comments uh, back from Brian after the event that, telling us how much he and his wife enjoyed the event. And I also want to thank you guys for showing up early and participating in the, uh, the parade, in the powerboat parade at Harbor Walk Village. So that was really, that's what kicked off your week, your boat week activities. And I think that was a great way to spend the entire week here. But then getting the money shot on Sunday, sticking around, for this nice fast run and getting full frame with the helicopter, I, I think that's a great way to close off a great weekend. So thanks to Brian and Susan for coming all the way from Ohio to join us for your first Emerald Coast Poker Run. Now we're catching up with Tim and Jamie Manning, a uh, 42-foot cigarette tiger. Uh, really clean boat. I got a closer look at this boat, but can you believe it's a 2002? Uh, you know, it's got a pair of Mercury Racing 575 supercharged and uh, really just a great package. But to think of that, 02, so it's a, it's a 15-year-old boat, 16-year-old boat, and it's in great shape. They got all their friends on board. Uh, I noticed he's got the David Clark headsets on, too, which is great for communicating with your uh, your fellow crew. 
Uh, but it was funny because they got in just at the tail end of the captain's meeting on Sunday morning and got their bag of goodies and got signed up at the last minute. And uh, But it was it was just under the wire. And look, at they're all wearing their life jackets, doing the right thing. So uh, thanks for joining us, Tim and Jamie. And I want to also uh, thank them for you know getting engaged with the club and being a part of our new committee for the two-event format in 2018. Uh, where they're going to be supporting and helping out to get more power boats on to the third weekend, which is really the best time and the safest time to be running these big high-speed boats around these waterways here in Emerald Coast. So thanks again to the Mannings who now live in Mary Esther. They came all the way from Texas, uh, but love this uh, boating lifestyle living in Mary Esther, Florida. Approaching high noon now, and you can see that the uh, sandbar is really filling up here at Crab Island and all of the recreational activities coming out. It really is a playground, and if you don't believe me, <laughs> look at all these little amusements they have, you know, and really kid-friendly too. So you can pretty much take the family here, throw an anchor. Uh, you can see all the pontoon boats. Obviously, they got one of the hugest rental fleets of pontoon boats here in the area. And I can tell you one thing, the difference between this weekend and the following weekend is big. A lot fewer boats on the water, which is better for the poker run. Now let's welcome Larry and Heather Montalero from Louisiana. They got their friend Jake that joined them for the weekend. I don't see him in the boat, but he's there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, 33 Fountain uh, with a pair of uh, 496 HOs. I think it's a great package, really. This boat with 496s probably gets great fuel economy, still goes plenty fast, and it's a really good looking ride. 2009 model, so let's say it's about eight years old. I mean, I'm looking at the boat right now and it looks like showroom clean. I really have to say that you guys on this poker run have done such a great job of maintaining your boats over the years that they're just going to give you more and more years of enjoyment as long as you take care of them. And you'll have a boat that you can do poker runs for so many years. So there's a great cockpit close-up of our crew having a nice day, wearing their life jackets. Uh, great job there on the safety management. And uh, once again, thanks for joining us, Larry and Heather, coming all the way from Louisiana to be a part of this Emerald Coast Poker Run. And for those of you guys who got out here to do the Sunday run, you guys are getting some serious airtime in terms of this broadcast. This is something that you should all consider in the future. Get out on Sunday, head for Crab Island, We'll find you. I'll point the boat in one direction and away you go. We got nothing to do but fly this helicopter and get your picture. And if I can shoot 100 frames and get some, get you on the show for more than a minute, I'm happy to do so. And ditto again now on that comment for Anthony DiMaggio, who's got his 38-foot uh, Scarab 1999 model Team Tata. I assume that has something to do with Tatas. Are we missing an S there or something? I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, I think he's just out for a nice little cruise, um, breaking away from the helicopter. I think we were trying to miss a boat there, but he's probably on his way back to the boat ramp to get the boat on the trailer and start heading back home. But once again, you know, a 99 boat, obviously it's been taken care of. We really don't see too many of these old scarabs anymore, and it's really cool to see them because it's a classic boat. Uh, I'm sorry, it's an 18-year-old boat. It's a classic. You know, this was a boat that was made popular originally in the 80s with racing and with the Miami Vice series, but uh, the Scarab brand hung around for a few years. Uh, you know, fast forward to today, and actually a Scarab is a fishing boat, <laughs> so things have changed. But obviously a boat with a lot of pedigree at the time. And Anthony, uh, looks like you need some more crew next year, so maybe we'll put a couple of FPC girls on board with you. But uh, thanks for joining us, for coming all the way to join us here at the Emerald Coast Poker Run, and hope you can come back in 2018 back out in the Gulf waters and uh, now catching up once again with Hugh Petroni in this 43 foot Nortec Supercat, the only one like it, Team Waynuts with a T-A-O-D, that's a toad paint job. And if you, you can't really see it here, but they're little cartoon characters throughout from, the, from stem to stern. Those are little cartoon characters carrying nuts and bolts. And it was created by Chad Huffman with Dean Louts from The Art of Design. And that paint job has stood the test of time. No other boat looks like it. Got some serious big power, and I know Hugh Petroni moved out of a fountain, a 38 fountain, into this boat. So it was a big move for him. Uh, and it's a lot of maintenance. He's assured me that he's been very committed to the project to keep this boat running well. If you want to own a big offshore power boat like this, you have to make that commitment because it will bite you in the ass <laughs> if you don't take care of it. Uh, but it's running great today as they run offshore in the Gulf waters. Once again, you know, when, the, when it's calm out here, it's really worth the effort to go out through the East Pass and get out into the Gulf and really just let her go because, uh, you know, we don't normally do that on the Saturday or even on the Friday, but Sunday 
when there's fewer boats to photograph, we always recommend that if the seas are calm and you want to go out, this is the, pl the place to do it, and this is where we're going to get some great shots. There you go. That doesn't get much closer than that, does it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on board as they enjoy their Sunday ride. So our Sunday aerial session uh, lasted about 90 minutes, uh, totaling out about seven hours of flying altogether here in the Florida Panhandle for this event. Probably the highest amount of flying we normally do for any event of this size. Uh, but we try to get everybody, and I apologize to anybody who didn't make it into the final cut. We'll make your boat a top priority on the next event. Celebrating 25 years with the Florida Powerboat Club and a big celebration here in the Florida Panhandle as we also celebrate the 25th edition of the Emerald Coast Poker Run. Here at the Destin Airport, this is kind of a home away from home for us here as we have now flown for three days in a row getting great coverage of the Poker Run participants out here in this beautiful Florida Panhandle and the local waters. Uh, altogether, about 100 boats registered in the Emerald class, about 90 boats in the Ruby class. That's a total of 190 teams. Everybody had a great time, and there was only one small incident yesterday that was reported, and luckily somebody was wearing their life jacket. The life jackets do work, guys, so remember, safety first. Make it your priority on every poker run that you attend. Stu Jones here, signing off from Destin, Florida, as we celebrate another great year with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. We hope to see you on the next poker run in paradise. Say hi to Rochelle Monet, who was uh, one of the Miss Boat Week contestants. Uh, she was a finalist, and she had my vote for the queen, so I'm unofficially making her Miss Boat Week. Kayla Campbell, uh, who also joined us from a local modeling agency, she's going to be back again in 2018, and she is going to be managing the Miss Power Boat Week contest at the Crab Island Cantina at Harbor Walk Village. And here is Brandy, who we met at the Smoke and the Sound Poker Run, and she did such a great job helping us out, uh, we decided to invite her back. We hope you enjoyed that bonus segment with our lovely FPC girls. And here's some nice shots as we wrap up this production. Uh, a great shot there of the Emerald Grand. And just a few footnotes here. Don't forget that the Noriega Point is being completely rebuilt with a new retaining wall and being filled up. So we'll be extending the point and providing more dockage at Harbor Walk Village right at Emerald Grand. So there's going to be a lot of activity in the 2018 format. I know that the Emerald Coast Foundation is going to keep their existing format the way they did it. I know that's going to bring a lot of Ruby class boats, local boats, etc. cetera. Uh, we did get a lot of pushback from many of you members about that format wasn't working for you. So we did the best we could, like we always have for our 25 years with Florida Powerboat Club. And we responded to your needs by creating a new event format. And that creates a two-event format here for the local community that I think is a win-win for everybody. It's a win-win for the hotels. It's a win-win for all of you boaters. And primarily, it's also a win-win for the charities because now we have two events that are going to be generating more charitable funds. And that's going to be leaving more money in town for these youth organizations. I wish that some of the locals and everybody else would look at it with a more positive spin like I do. Uh, I'm, I like to look at the big picture and I like to think about how can we make this a better event for everybody and I'm responding to that need and to that challenge uh, and I just wish that some of the locals would embrace that opportunity and understand that I've been doing this now for 20 years up here almost at the Emerald Coast event. I love it up here. I love the people. I love the boating and I'm committed to making this a successful event for everybody but there's no negativity in my approach. My approach is a win-win based on the need for a better safety format for less boats on the water on a congested weekend. Safer because we've got so many different styles of boats and speeds and a lot more fun because we can spread the parties out. Everyone on my party is going to get a chair and a plate and they're going to have a meal and they're going to have a party and they're going to be recognized. You can't jam 1,500 people into a room that's capable of holding about 800 or 900 and expect everybody to have a good experience. The Florida Powerboat Club is an event management company. We are membership driven. We raise money for charities all over the state of Florida, but our main mission and our main goal is to enhance and improve the Florida boating lifestyle and to give everyone the best possible experience we can on one of our event platforms. And the Emerald Coast is important to us, it's dear to us. We plan to stay here for a very, very long time and I think it was just time for a change and I wish everyone would step back and be able to look at the big picture with me and join with me in saying, yes, this is the right answer for what we've got going on here in the Emerald Coast. This is the best solution and let's go forward together. 
Our event dates are going to be August the 15th to the 19th. We're going to start out on Wednesday. We're calling the event Power Boat Week, not Boat Week, not to take away from our friends at the Emerald Coast Foundation. We are calling this the Emerald Coast Power Boat Poker Run, keyword on Power Boat. That is our format, and we are allowing cruisers and yachts to join into the format. We are not allowing small boats to join in. It's not safe to do so. We don't agree with that format. It's, we've been doing events for a long time, and I think this is the right solution. So please, everybody, uh, join with us uh, in 2018 as we go forward with what is going to be the 26th edition of the Emerald Coast Powerboat Poker Run in conjunction with the other event, which will take place a weekend early. This is Stu Jones, president and founder of the Florida Powerboat Club. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you in 2018.